Adam, on his bike, stood high off the seat riding the pedals. The palms and the monkey pod trees turned the street into a long green tunnel. Flowers flashed by, red and white and lavender, on every lawn and house. He was going nowhere in a hurry. Nobody to meet, no friend, no game waiting. But it was good to be moving. He rode down Punchbowl Street, past the Iolani Palace, the home of the Hawaiian kings and queens, and the statue of Kamehameha the Great, a Hawaiian general who had united the islands more than 100 years ago. He rode through the downtown area to the pier and then turned up along the shore. A jumble of little cottages was plunked down near the ocean. Narrow lanes and cars parked every which way, sand everywhere. The buildings weathered, faded, and battered, almost flat by the sun. The sky was a colorless blue. The wind gusted, and the ocean rose and fell. Frothy ripple rollers rippled toward the shore. In the distance, Adam saw sampans and Japanese fishing boats. Fla, a tiny Japanese woman was selling flowers door to door. Fla, she sang. He walked his bike down to the water. The beach was almost empty. Nearby was the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, and beyond it, the Moana and the Halekulani, where his parents went to dance. Suddenly, a bunch of boys burst down from the lane and onto the beach. Some were on bikes, some were running. They were tossing a ball back and forth. Adam wouldn't have minded playing, but they were all Hawaiian kids, and he didn't know them. Then someone yelled, Heoli! It was Davy Mori, barefoot and wearing a pair of old pants in one of those flowered Hawaiian shirts. Hey, Heoli, you want to play? Adam hesitated. He was glad to see Davy, but he never knew what to think of that Heoli stuff. We need one more player. Uh, well, what's the game? Davy tossed a coconut to him. Football. Only we play it with a coconut. Ah, so coconut ball, he said, and he was sorry. It sounded too much like a Charlie Chan movie. Maybe Davy would think of it, think he was making fun of him. Tackle. Uh, one knee is down. Okay. Uh, come on, then. The others were waiting. This is my friend D uh, Adam, Davy said. He's on my team. The other team leader was a big, noisy kid called Martin Kawahawai. What do you need the holy for, Maury? No brains of your own? Yeah, you got five on a team. Now I got five. The end zones were marked in the sand. Sidelines, too. We're the devil sharks, Davy said. Hey, Martin said. That's Hawaiian. So? Well, you're a jab. Yeah, and you're a moron. You can, call, you can have devil sharks, Davy turned to the others. Quick, give us a name. Uh, um, ah, uh, uh, barracudas? A dark, skinny kid named Joseph said. Rattlesnakes? How about, like, sea scouts? Nah, too much like Boy Scouts. How about Girl Scouts? <laughs> sure, we can be the Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> uh, Wildcats? Wildcats, Davy said. Like the F, the F4F Navy fighter? Nah, Davy said. But then Martin said, Devil sharks eat wildcats for breakfast. That did it. Let's go wildcats, Davy said. Davy's team got the coconut first. The guys were talking back and forth, watching each other, but never saying anything to Adam, not even looking at him. Davy was the quarterback. He faked the throw to the left. Then he ran to the right and got past the whole shark team all the way to the end zone. Hey, sharks, Davy said. That was so easy. Now the double sharks had the coconut. Martin's going to keep it, Davy said. So pile up on him. Well, what if he passes, Adam said. You won't. He, you'll see. He won't. Martin ran like a truck in low gear, but those arms and legs of, it, of his knocked the wild cart, wildcats off left and right. Nobody could bring him down. He went through them like a bowling ball through a bunch of ten pins. I told you guys, he kept saying, you got to hang on to him. Adam had his hands up for the ball a lot, but Davey never threw to him. He kept passing the other guys, especially Joseph, who made two touchdowns. But then the next time Joseph carried the ball, Martin popped it out of his hands and ran with it. It like like for sure, Martin, another Martin touchdown. Stop him, Davy shouted. You, you got to get him. Adam caught up with Martin. Then he was in front of Martin, trying to slow him down until Martin tripped and they both fell. You got him. You got him, Davy shouted. After that, Adam felt more like a part of the team. They took off their shirts. They took their shirts off and played away the afternoon. Afterwards, they threw themselves into the ocean, then sat around near the ashes of a fire, insulted one another. Hey, Slant Eye, what, Moonface? 
You look like a cat with diarrhea. Yeah, well, you look like a rat with a bellyache. You call that an insult? Adam didn't say much. Just sat next to Davy and listened. One of the boys cracked open a coconut with a rock. They all took pieces. First time I ever ate fresh coconut, Adam said. Hey, holy boy, Martin said. You're getting to be a real Hawaiian. You know Kemapua? Who? Adam said. Kemapua, the great Hawaiian pig god. Pig god? You're kidding me, right? Martin eyed him contemptuously. The great pig god, Kemapua. He's got eight eyes, eight legs, 40 toes, heats the valleys, swallows volcanoes whole, he brushes his teeth with trees, and when he farts, he makes all the islands shake. What do you say, hey old boy? You got a god like that? Adam half smiled. Was Martin pulling his leg? You sure? You sure he a haoli? Martin said to Davy. He don't act that smart to me. You got fish for him. fish brain, Davy said. You got mush brain. They were still at the insults when Adam thought to look at a time. It was 1700, and he was supposed to be home in an hour. His father would be waiting. Uh, see you, he said, and he ran for his bike. Davy came with him, and they rode along together, talking about the food they didn't like and songs they did. I really like On the Road to Mandalay, Adam said. Where the flying fishes play, Davy sang. They were singing at the top of their voices. Adam never saw the hole in the road. He was thrown from the bike, gravel in his palms. That was okay. What wasn't okay was his bike. The steering wheel was all wobbly. Something was cracked and it was impossible to ride. How? Oh, what am I going to do now? I can't go home with the bike this way. My dad will fix it, Davy said. Your dad? Yeah, he can fix anything. Adam hesitated. If he went to Davies, he'd be late. But if he had to walk all the way home, he'd be late too. And with a broken bike. Davy lived downtown near the hotel street, where sailors went on leave, where Adam's parents told him never to go. The area was called Chinatown, but Davy said mostly Japanese people lived there now. He led the way down one narrow alleyway after another, some of them so crowded the balconies almost touched. He stopped in front of a yard, half covered with weeds. His father was in the back, working on a flatbed truck, a skinny man with bony arms and big teeth. Adam knew he shouldn't even think it, but Davy's father looked, looked like one of those crazy Japs in a comic book. This is my friend Adam, Davy said. His father sat down on the edge of the truck, wiping his hands with a rag and rag and talking to Davy in Japanese. Talk English, Dad, Davy said, glancing at Adam. Very happy to make your acquaintance, Mr. Mori hopped down bowed from the waist, his hands at his side. To make up for his mean thought, Adam bowed back. Hey, Davy punched him. Quit kidding around. You don't have to do that stuff. His father examined the bike, muttered under his breath. Adam was pretty sure he was saying like, stupid kid in Japanese. Davy thought, brought over a welding car, holding two gas tanks. He unwound cables, turned gauges, and handed his father the brass welding torch and a pair of dark goggles. Mr. Morey lit the torch and adjusted the hissing flame from the yellow to blue. He pulled down the goggles, and with a long metal rod, he welded on his bike. He did it in a minute. When the weld had cooled, he wire-brushed it clean, then bounced the bike up and down a couple times. Good, he said. Fix good. Adam rode the bike around the yard. It was solid again. Thanks. Thanks a lot. How much? He put his hand in his pocket. Davy's father shook his head and went back to work on the truck. I, I can pay. Forget it. He did it because you're my friend. The torch had burned away the paint along the side of the repair. Davy dipped the brush of can brush in a can of red paint and painted over the weld. Thanks, Adam said again. I better get going now. Well, what's the rush? My dad will kill me from late. He'll understand. You had an accident. You couldn't help that. Besides, the paint has to dry. You want to see my room? Adam let himself be persuaded and followed Davy through a gate in a high hedge into a into a shaded garden with several low buildings. A long, low table with an oil cloth tacked on top sat under a lattice of vines and red flowers, and a wooden ice block leaned against one of the sheds. Adam followed Davy into the biggest shed. It smelled like seaweed and vinegar. Mama, Davy called. On the wall in a niche, gleaming out of the dimness, was a portrait of a mustached man sitting stiffly on a white horse. That's Hirohito. Adam said, showing off a little. Your honorable emperor. Not mine, said Davy emphatically. My parents think he's divine, like a living god, but they were born over there in Japan. But I was born here, 100% American. They're Isai, I'm Nisai. Well, that's what we say. Come on. They went out 